Hey folks, do it here. Uh, okay, um, well we've been doing all kinds of survival stuff and it's getting a little dry. I decided to have a little fun. Okay, I I'm going to show off a little bit and I'm going to inspire myself and hopefully inspire you guys to get, well, start your knife collection. But it's for a purpose. You got to have, in a survival situation, something worthy. You have to have something that you know for a fact it's going to save your butt. Yeah, it's... It's old tech. These were really, well, they were the shiznit back in the 80s. Okay, I'm really reaching here. Um, that's my Buckmaster. That's like a very old Buckmaster. Um, that's a Probus M9 bayonet. And, okay, you can see comparatively. Um, let me go a little mobile here so you guys can get an idea of what I'm speaking about. That's right, I'm popping out the camera. Notice, very similar construction. I know I went 90 degrees on you guys. I'm sorry. But I went 90 degrees on you. Very similar construction. There's a reason why. The same guys that designed the Frobus, they designed the Buckmaster. Buck actually was the original contractor before the guys said, okay, we can make that cheaper. And Buck, of course, lost the contract, or they were still making it, and a bunch of other guys were making it for the service. Survival tools? Uh, I don't know, man. You ask any SEAL about the Buckmaster, he's going to say, first off, the little hooks that screw into the guard and make it a grapnel or a throwing hook, you don't need that. It's kind of cool and everything, but you're throwing away one of your major weapons. You don't do that. You never throw away a perfectly good knife. Okay, um, well, they're kind of, okay, they're glitzy, they're kind of cool, and the M9, the M9 is still in service. Um, don't handle an M9 like this. That's a good way to break your thumb, and that was the first thing the drill instructor told us. Do not do Yes, it says Frobus, says M9, it's the three line. It's it's a keeper. It's actually seen service, so it's not quite as pretty, but it's actually a good one. Okay, what else do we have going through the well the, the line of things? Um You will probably never encounter one of these. That's right. This here is the Russian survival machete. Oh, badass, isn't it? Got an inside edge, got saw teeth on the back, got some way to secure it all. Um, you actually can cheat with this, and there's a little pin that screws up there, so you can kind of get like your triangulation set up, because it actually has stuff stamped onto the blade. Uh, yeah, here you go. You have stuff stamped onto the blade to show you like degrees of angle, and you can kind of estimate distance. Kind of cool. Big honking piece of steel. 1095 carbon steel. Um, you can make this at home with a leaf spring. Uh, I would say do so. There's patterns on the internet. Badass. Just badass. Okay, what else do we have? Um, if you prefer a knife that bends in the middle, it, it, well, you can find these on eBay. This would be known as your, well, your Gerber Parabellum. That means prepared for war, you know, uh, was it, um, if you wish for peace, prepare for war. Uh, well, that's what you need to have. Civic Possum Parabellum or Civic Pockham Parabellum. If you wish for peace, prepare for war. That's what you need. Well, it's a good knife. It's a little big. It's a little bulky. The sheath flips over, and so you can stick it in the sheath when it's open or closed. Good thinking. Discontinued. Thanks, Gerber. You were making a good one, and you stopped. But it is a very good handle, and the blade is not too terribly big. It's not a chopper. It's more of a field knife. Good stuff. Uh, what else do we have? Available and not available any longer. Um, Spyderco Goddard, this is my everyday carry. And there's a reason why. This one got me busted in Disney, and they said, you're going to have to lock it up, dude, because you can't carry this. It's too big and scary. Um, encounter them on eBay? Sometimes never go cheap. Excellent, excellent knife. It's a Spyderco. They don't unlock easy. It is an excellent piece. As a matter of fact, how excellent is it? That's how excellent it is. Walk and talk like you don't find in most production knives. Buy a Spyderco. You'll be very happy with them. They make very good camping knives. Um, very decent survival tools. You fold it up. You got your belt clip. It hangs on your pocket perfectly. Uh, just like, well, I broke the clip. If the clip's a little loose now, I borrowed one off my rescue. Uh, that's why it's not quite so perfect, pristine, and pretty, but it still works. Excellent piece. Uh, what else do we have? Um... I believe this is the civilian. Don't hold me to it. This is obviously the police. Um, handles bigger, blades bigger. 
uh, slightly, no, nah, the same finish. It's the same knife, basically. Just bigger blade, bigger handle. Good stuff. Um, like I said, I was playing with the Tecna earlier. You can encounter these on eBay. They tend to run either some way, somewhere insane or somewhere less than insane. Good handle-filling knife. Blade profile is a little weird to sharpen. Not quite so good a field knife, but it is still a very nice secondary knife. That's why I have them. Oh, the sheath. Yeah, that's not going anyplace. Lift it up, pops out, does exactly what it needs to do. When you absolutely positively need to stick something, um, well, the dirty little secret is the double-edged knife makes a heck of an easy in. It's not pretty on the way, well, going in. What's even less prettier than that one? That would be the dreaded Blackmore Dirk. These are discontinued from Eck knives, and, well, this is a Chinese copy because... The original ones are ridiculously expensive. Now, why is this one a bad one to get hit with? Yeah, it kind of likes... It looks like you've got the SR-71 flying at you. It's a triangle. It's flat on the bottom, and it's angled on the top. The entry wound this guy makes, it's not a slit. It's like a moon. And it, the, it's an open wound. It doesn't heal easy. These are very, very nasty to get hit with. And, well, that's old technology because you can see a lot of the armor-piercing stuff was built on a profile of a diamond. Not quite a, well, a double-edged knife, per se, but a diamond where you kind of have a slight concave on the back. Notice that is not flat. That's got a slight concave. Also, it has 45-degree um, or, well, maybe 60-degree angles on the front. Maybe 120-degree, but, man, this sucker is just going to be dag nasty to get hit by and... Ugh, it's a keeper, it's a piece that I have as like, you know, something as a collector piece. I wouldn't really fight with it. it, it could it work? Yes, potentially. What's your best survival knife? Probably a Swiss Army knife, because it's got three things going for it. It's small. It's very, very usable. It's got like 30 tools on the thing. Three, they are eminently handy to get. Also, one other thing. Does this really look all that terribly, well, threatening? No, not really. If you compare this to this, yeah, the cops are going to go, buddy, why do you have something this big, this evil looking, and that sharp? This, well, this is, well, this is the big puppy dog of, um, well, needing to save your butt out in the outback, uh, or any place else that you encounter that, well, needs the tool to be applied at the time to save your, well, rear end skin in terms of knives there's a couple things you got to remember big knives well all right big knives can do many 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 jobs little knives uh, well they're kind of coming up literally short there's a lot of stuff this guy can't cut this guy can cut if you need to whittle with this it's not very hard to choke up on the blade and do it. Um, trying to use this itty bitty guy, which is only about a three and a half inch blade to hack through a tree. Uh, you're going to be there all flipping day. And it's not going to be pretty. You're going to have hands that look like you've been wrestling um, uh, uh, well a blender. It's just not going to be good times. Now, in terms of the Swiss Army Knife, of course you have many usable uh, implements. You do have a real saw, and yeah, it's not a huge blade. It will work, and it will save your bacon. Also, there's so many additional tools on here. There's two blades. If you get one blade dull, you got the other blade. You got the corkscrew. Um, I really haven't encountered wine bottles in a survival situation as of yet, but it's got to have some other purpose on there. Uh, well... I'll think of something. I mean, you know, you're out in the you're out in the survival situation. You got to make do with the tools you got, and you got like thirty tools. So hell, I could find something to do with it. Um, auto repairs very very handy as well. There's a lot of tools that well, if you go on the internet and you scrounge around, remember, big knives do a lot of jobs. Little knives are kind of limited. Um, serrated edges harder to sharpen. Regular edges easier to sharpen. Less aggressive. Sometimes it takes more work to cut through something. It's a trade-off. Everything's a trade-off with a knife. Too much is too little. Too little is too much. Well, 
This is a basic, well, bit of my collection, and I'm kind of a knife guy. Enjoy, and...